Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. And welcome back and welcome to this week's update. Today is April the 30th, uh, 2024. And I know I always say uh, it's going to be a short one. I'm going to try to keep it to 10 minutes and it always last 15. But this is going to be a long one. So uh, if you got a cup of coffee or a alcoholic beverage, I mean an, an adult beverage, uh, get ready because I'm probably going to say so at least 10 or 15 times. And the drinking game is every time I say so, uh, you got to take a drink or take a shot. So that part is up to you. <sighs> a lot's been going on. That's all I can say. So, shot. I've been working on the uh, the swing gate. If you are new to the channel, uh, I challenge you to go back and watch uh, the couple of videos that I did. I've been working on this for a while. I've made some modifications here and there. And I think you're going to be impressed with what I'm about to show you. And if you're not impressed, uh, just sit there and know that I am impressed with what I did because because I always impress myself. And if you don't impress yourself and your wife isn't impressed by you, then you have to impress yourself. Does that any, any of that make sense? Well, if you're married, it makes perfect sense. So let's go over here and we'll see what I did. Okay, so if you remember uh, on the swing gate, I made it very, very simple. All I did was uh, put my bus wire down through a hole and I put a staple in the bottom to hold it in place to secure it. I did this for both sides and I also built these uh, I took this, uh, oh man, it was like these little pieces of copper that came with a grounding rod or something like that for like your, your water line in your basement. And I cut them and I bent them so they're real small. I took the bus lines underneath and just basically pinched them in with a screw between the copper and the uh, uh, wood itself. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, thought that went into this. It was just a quick idea that I thought would work temporarily that I think has worked good enough that I'm probably just going to modify it just a tweak and keep using it because it works too well to worry about it. Now if you remember right or if you remember that the gate would swing shut but I didn't have any power on this part that's behind me. Guess where there's power now. So I basically did the exact same thing over here. Let me swing around a little bit better. Yep, put down some track. I did the same thing over here. Uh, I tweaked the design just a, a hair that made it a little bit better. So basically all I did was take the, uh, the bus wire underneath, uh, made a loop in it, and then put the screw through it and the uh, piece of copper, and everything's good. I installed this uh, piece of wood here so that when I shut the gate, it will slide up on top of it, and it make sure that it's level here because uh, relying on the floor and the wheels that are on the bottom of the swing gate didn't work out so well. And there was a little bit of a gap and I couldn't get the gap to close. And I thought, you know, I just had an epiphany of, you know, if it was the exact same height as this piece of wood here, that it'd be perfect. And it worked out quite well. Now, it's very close tolerance here, so I always open it and close it very slowly just in case it, it, it moved or something because uh, last week I opened it up and wasn't paying attention and uh, the rail expanded just enough and it just barely touched and it ripped all this out. That kind of made me mad. So I had to refix it or refix it, fix it, just fix it, I guess. So once it's locked into place, it is almost perfectly level on both tracks. Now this track on the, the uh, what will be the middle track is actually the uh, east yard lead. Uh, all the trains being built from this end of the yard will be on this track here. So it's gonna be a lot of traffic. So I had to make sure that that was perfectly smooth uh, inside the rails and on top of the rails. Uh, this is the main line right here closest to you. Uh, same thing, gonna be a lot of traffic on there. There's just a little bit of a, of a, a, a height difference here probably like a thousandth of an inch. I can barely feel it with my finger. So I'll, what I'll end up doing is uh, filing this down on this rail just a little bit to uh, smooth out that transition. But 
What I also did was uh, I put in two uh, two main lines. Well, not two main lines. I put in two tracks. So you got the main line here. I put in uh, two pieces of flex track, so six feet, uh, just kind of around the curve. And on the yard lead, I wanted to play around building trains. So I think I put in uh, six pieces. And uh, so what's that, 18 feet? 18 feet plus. And then I went and I soldered uh, these rail joints together and feeder lines as well that go down to the new bus. And let me show you the connection over here and how I did that. I probably should have made sure you could see my head and everything before I before I started shooting that. So basically what happens when the gate shuts, the copper touches. And since it's at an angle, um, it works out pretty well. Now this first contact hit uh, once or twice and I had to just bend it ever so slightly to uh, get it to uh, slide right on there, but they touch pretty good and there's pretty good uh, conduct activity, I guess, conductivity, and everything looks pretty good. Now, these suitcase uh, clips right here are super simple to use. I mean, it takes a little practice, but uh, I got that technique down pat. And I've got my wires are just hanging off there because I need to uh, finish pulling this uh, black bus line through. And then I'll basically just take this wire, feed it through that hole, and then uh, I'll twist tie them together and everything will be all right. And uh, I ran out of red, so I need to buy some red. And right now, that 12-gauge wire is about, oh, 50 bucks for 100 feet, I think. So it's a little bit expensive. I'll give you a good overview of the two tracks I laid down. Not too shabby. A little jog right there on the track. I think that looks pretty good. That was by design. And let's go down here to this. This scene I've been kind of working on. And I'll show you a couple things I've done. Now, it looks about the same as what it did last week. But what I've decided to do was, uh, instead of making this bridge over the road, uh, sit on top of the concrete and then having the roadbed, I wanted this industrial line to basically be right on the ground. And I want to have some street running. And I thought that'd be a whole lot easier to uh to do and to achieve if there wasn't roadbed now the main lines back here have the roadbed and this up a little higher uh between the bottom of the bridge and the street would be a scale 15 feet uh over here it'll probably be like 13 feet uh, what i've also done is i've taken some of this uh shelf trim that have grooves in it and i've made these uh like a corner piece here and a couple of supports here and here to uh, hold the bridge up. And I thought I thought that kind of gave it an Art Deco look. And a lot of these um, underpasses and stuff built in the 30s and 40s and 50s had that Art Deco uh, styling to them. So I thought that looked kind of cool, that little corner piece there. I'll put a, a square of this off and then like fill it up with something and I'll put some plants or something in there, you know, something decorative. Uh, you know, because, you know, that's what you see at intersections and, and stuff, uh, interchanges on interstate and everything. I cut out a uh, on-ramp, off-ramp that will come up into the town. I kind of scribbled on there a little bit, made a road. I just need to uh, start naming streets and everything. I think, I think this is going to look pretty decent. I know it looks, you know, more gray than it does road. It doesn't look very good, and but this is still in the mock-up phase as I'm going through and coming up with ideas and on the left side of the where the foam is and you got the break right there in the middle uh, I'm going to do the it's going to be like a mirror image right here but this foam over here is just something temporary so I, you know for planning purposes and uh, I'll get a new piece of foam here in a week or so and work on this section and probably that section there as well I need to get some more track and some more road bed I need to place a big order for that but I'm really happy with the way this is uh, working out so far. I mean, uh, it's just, you know, the track's just put there and clipped together. But I think it's uh, it's running on there pretty good. The trains are running on there pretty good. Uh, had a couple of derailments yesterday right through here. It was the same car multiple times, so I think it was more the car than the track. 
but you can kind of see how that is. Uh, track centers right here are about an inch and seven eighth apart. Most of my main lines are two inches apart, but uh, I got a little close in this area, but there's still plenty of space in between the uh, uh, two tracks and all the equipment running on the adjacent track, so there's not a problem. Give you a close up right here. Not looking too shabby. Make some minor adjustments here and there. And I think it's looking pretty good. I have a feeling that in this spot here, I'll, I'll probably end up using PC ties. Uh, Paul Sesser, I think that's how you say his last name. It's C-A-S-S-E-R. He's a, a modeler down in Australia. And he has the uh, HO Scale Shelf Modelers uh, group on Facebook which I think we have about 19,200 members now. Uh, Paul also does a podcast, and I can't remember for the life of me what that podcast is called. So, Paul, when you watch this video, uh, put a link down there to your podcast and, and uh, help me out. But uh, he suggested I use PT ties at some point to uh, prevent the rails from, uh, I guess, moving around. I guess it'd, it'd hold them more securely in place. And uh, he sent me a link to them, and I hadn't really done any research on PC ties, but uh, I think I think that might be the route to go. And you see down here, the, the tolerances are pretty tight. Pretty happy with it, pretty happy with it. So the whole idea of putting those tracks in and that one track on the lead so I can I can play around and, and switch trains right now I know I can do it from the west end of the yard but uh, my op plan or my operations plan uh, literally has an uh, east yard job and a west yard job working the yard simultaneously and I wanted to kind of play around with building a train to dispatch to the east and I think I think I've got it down pat so track six where the Virginian and Ohio motors are at I got about 45 or 50 cars in that track. And for uh, an operating session, I'm probably gonna limit train length to uh, about 50 cars. When it's just me out here playing, I like to run a lot longer. And uh, I think my plan will encompass uh, a locomotive or uh, the power, I guess the train's power, uh, coming out of one of the tracks over here. And each track holds about 20 cars. And then you'll come out there and then uh, shove back into either six or seven and couple up to about 45 or 50 cars, and that'll give you about 75 cars, and that's that's a fairly decent-sized train. And then you can you can pull out and, uh, you know, make your run around the layout. The west side yard job has a easier time of it. You have the west yard lead, which is where the train is sitting at right now, it S curves around and you can see the head end power oh right about there focus and it's over there at RA tower and uh, I can use this as a passing siding as well same thing with uh, coming down the east yard lead into track number one and I can bring it down here and go through the double slip switch and come back to the main line if I want to play that way but it's, uh, it's always an option because I know something is going to happen at some point and that will be a necessity. I haven't done too much over here. Uh, still got that, uh, that rock uh, parking lot to put in. Take me 10 minutes to do it if I just do it, but I haven't done it. So a lot of ballast needs to get done over here. Oh, here's something. So my little tower that I made here, this is the uh, uh, WY Tower, West Yard Tower. And I've decided to change this location. I was going to place it right here, but it didn't make any sense to do that because I didn't want the uh, uh, crews to have to cross over main line to get their orders or talk to the yard master in person. So I moved it back here a little bit. It's at the end of the cab track, but it's pretty close to the turntable. I'm not really happy with that, but at the same time, I think it's gonna be okay right here by the uh, famous Anderson culvert. And uh, I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Take you down here to East Yard Tower. So 
So this is ECR tower just for now until I finish the other tower that I have. Uh, this came out of the uh, Nickel Plate Historical Society monthly publication as a, uh, it's just a, a like a shanty, a, a shack, a nickel plate shack. And it's just paper that I glued onto some cardboard and cut it out. And I use this to, uh, you know, represent a lot of different things. You know, I just put it here and there. It's a guard shack on the other side of the layout for the Army base and uh, some other things like that. But a kind of neat little little project. It was fun to build and, you know, a little bit more... Uh, aggravating than what I was expecting but on the better things so you see I got the green foam down here and I got the rounded corner piece right there uh, in the middle of the screen uh, this side of the layout will have a coal tipple and a, a second main line that comes down that's a, a different railroad or it could be a branch line I was going to do one big like mountain or a ridge down the middle here all, all along that green seam and uh, behind the roundhouse where that blue box is at right there. But I've decided to basically just do a seam divider and essentially build uh, a hill on one side and then leave the other side be until I put down the track and then do the same thing on that side because I kind of want the main line to come right through this little gap of green foam and like right through here and then come down along this line and essentially go into a tunnel that way there you can work the coal tipple but the main line will be out of sight kind of out of mind um so we're gonna work on that one here soon well i know what you want you want to see a train come over this uh this track so let me get everything set up for you and then uh, will see if we have a derailment because i know uh i've been playing around with this and it hasn't derailed but when I shot this video a couple of days ago, um, I had derailments. So I ended up deleting that video because I had trouble uploading last night. And uh, between uploading issues and trying to troubleshoot why it was not uploading and why it was stopping at 60%. And it just stayed at 60% all night long. So I was uh, slightly pissed. So I had troubleshoot and then I thought, you know, maybe maybe the, the video was, you know, to me megapixels or too many megabytes or something i don't know so i just said you know screw it i'll reshoot it and uh here we are so we're at 15 minutes i'll probably run the train here for about uh maybe five to ten that'll put us about 25 minutes that should be a pretty good update so today's stars of the show will be uh alco rsd12 uh nickel plate road 337 and 339 Got the sound off, but they both have a TCS Wow sound in them, and uh, the speakers were giving me fits, and they sounded like crap. So what I ended up doing was swapping in a uh, soundtrack speaker. They sound a lot better, but uh, they're they're still pretty annoying, um, just because they uh, they just to me they sound like the dynamics are on the whole time. So, but I'll let you hear them anyway, and you can watch it go over uh, both the uh, transition joints, and uh, you can see how it goes. Looks pretty good to me. Nice and smooth. Now, if I could just get my damn yard lead to uh, stay clean, it'd be nice. It seems like that, not, 
no matter how many times I clean it, they still stall out going across there. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I've been getting pretty burned out with projects lately, so doing a little bench work and laying some track has gotten me some instant uh, gratification. So I think I'm all wound up to do my uh, start working on projects again. And we got the model train show coming up here in about three weeks, and uh, I've got a substantial amount of models to display. I'm pretty happy with the way the majority of them look. I had a big failure the other day with an Alco PA and some decals that just shredded on me and I can't find any replacement decals. So that's gonna go in the uh, uh, to finish later pile. But uh, if you like this video and uh, you wanna share it, feel free to do so. If you haven't subscribed, I ask you to do so. Um, leave a comment, I love the comments. If you think my video sucks, you can blame Dwight because he's been on my ass for like the last three days about posting a video. So. Just tell Dwight to, uh, you know, slow his roll a little bit. And uh, once again, like, comment, subscribe. Come back here in a few days and see what I talk about next. Thank you for watching.